Hello Year 11, this is um, my first attempt at making a video lesson, so bear with me. Uh, there may be a few mistakes here and there. This lesson's all about performance enhancing drugs, um, and the two things that I want you to get from this, this video lesson are to know the key types of performance enhancing drugs, and to learn about the side effects of each of these drugs. Now by learning this information, you'll be able to access the grade D and C questions on, a, on an exam paper. In the lesson next week, we'll be looking at um, tasks to help you access the grade B, A and A star material on an exam paper. Now, performance enhancing drugs can enhance a person's performance in some way, either in a physical activity, in training or in daily life. They include some drugs that are socially acceptable um, and many that are, are deemed illegal. Some of these drugs, some of these performance enhancing drugs include anabolic steroids, beta blockers, diuretics, narcotic analgesics, stimulants, peptide hormone, hormones, including something which is called EPO, erythroprotein. Sports people take performance enhancing drugs for many different reasons, and up on the screen now are some of those main reasons to improve um, or enhance their performance. They can be encouraged by coaches or fellow athletes. The rewards of success can be very high, and because of the financial benefits for taking them. Now in terms of the first point to enhance and improve performance, some athletes take these drugs because they've trained so hard and they've got to the best that, that they can be at um, and they want to just go to that next level. The one that really grates me really is uh, the second point to be encouraged by coaches and fellow athletes. Um, a coach is a, a person who's in a position of trust, who's, who's directing probably young athletes um, and trying to get them to make the right decisions and often you can be easily influenced by the person that's in charge of making sure that you, you become the best person that you can be. And in terms of the final point, the financial benefits, if you think about the lifespan of a sports performer, it can be relatively short. Um, so sports performers take these performance enhancing drugs to make themselves well known because they win competitions through taking them. By winning competitions, they win money. Um, so the financial benefits are good because it means they can be comfortable when they retire um, at a very early age. So onto the the most common drug taken in sport, um, and this is anabolic steroids. Now, in the box that you can see on the on the screen, um, you need to make sure you note down this definition somewhere because you'll need to know this um, for for an exam. Now, steroids, because of the high level of testosterone in them, um, it can have many effects on on a sports performer. May, um, one of the biggest side effects um, are most noticeable in women. Uh, you have a deepening of the voice. Um, and it causes growth of facial hair, as well as obviously um, gaining a, a larger muscle mass. So some of the main effects of anabol anabolic steroids, sorry. Increases muscle mass and bone density, which obviously increases strength and muscle performance. It allows the athlete to train harder and recover quicker. Um, if you can recover quicker, you can put more hours into the sessions, your muscles become stronger, you can work harder. Um, and obviously because of that, it produces the results quickly. Um, one of the other effects of an anabolic steroid is it increases aggression in, in a performer. Um, now obviously this is suitable for, for people who are taking part in sports such as boxing, um, wrestling. You've got rugby players who need that, that large amount of aggression to make them perform at the highest level. Now with all drugs, there are obvious side effects. Um, the, the ones on the left are how it's gonna aid the performance. Um, the ones on the right you're now gonna see are the ones that um, are the health risks to the performer. So these include an increased risk of heart attacks and strokes, high blood pressure, liver disease, and an increased risk of muscle injury. Because obviously, if you're overtraining or you're working harder, your muscles don't have enough time to rest and recover. Um, on the fa um, final one, th there's a, a risk of death. Um, taking anabolic steroids is very, very dangerous and it shouldn't be done whatsoever. Okay, onto the next drug. This drug is called a beta blocker. Now, beta blockers are drugs commonly prescribed for people with, with heart problems as they maintain a low heart rate and lower blood pressure. As a result, stress levels and anxiety are reduced. Now, beta blockers are, are very useful um, in target sports where steadiness and precision are required because they reduce the heart rate. So some of the advantages of taking these things are up on the screen now. 
helps reduce stress levels and anxiety, reduces the heart rate to help with steadiness and precision when you've got to look at a target which is far away. Um, but it can be dangerous for a fit person because it lowers the heart rate and a fit person's heart rate is already generally very low. If it gets any lower, there can become serious complications. Um, and then side effects. Can diarrhea, tiredness, depression, insomnia, and nightmares. So the next drug is called a diuretic. Now diuretics help you get rid of any waste water within your body. Um, very useful if you want to lose weight um, to, to meet a, a weighing or for a jockey who needs to meet, be a certain weight for riding a horse in a horse event. Another main reason for a performer taking a diuretic is that it helps mask any other drugs that you've got in your system. It helps water down that concentration. Um, so if you're taking an anabolic steroid, for instance, by taking a diuretic as well, you can mask the fact that you've got that in your system. So a few of the main reasons for taking a diuretic. It increases the kidney function, so you're producing more urine, so you can get rid of it quicker. And it reduces the concentration of other banned substances that you may have in your system. Obviously, the side effects, the bad side effects to this are things like dehydration. If you're losing a lot of water, um, you're going to become dehydrated, which can cause dizziness, muscle cramps, headaches and nausea. And then obviously, because your kidneys are working um, over time, you can have long term kidney problems as well. Now the next drug is uh, narcotic analgesics. Injuries can be a, a massive problem for sports people. They want to compete, not sit and watch from the sidelines, and many of them make very, very, very poor spectators. Think about yourselves, um, especially in front of their own teammates. If you're injured, you're desperate to get back onto that pitch. As a result of this, many people, or many sports people, are prepared to take drugs so they can return to competition quickly um, and make sure they're, they're ready to perform as fast as possible. Taking this drug is, is one of those methods. Um, as you can see on the screen, it's a drug that reduces um, pain. There are a wide range of different narcotics you can take to reduce pain. Um, I'm going to give you some examples now, such as heroin, methadone, pethidine for moderate pain, um, and the powerful painkiller, morphine. So up on the screen now, you'll be able to see some of the reasons why a person would take a narcotic. So it helps the helps to return injured athletes to competition quickly and it depresses the central nervous system to give relief from painful injuries. Now obviously if you've got a painful injury and you're masking that and you play on it, there's a greater chance that you're going to cause more problems in the long term. When I mean a most Now the next drug is a stimulant. Now, Stimulants.
on some of the reasons. And the lung. Now the next. Now these drug Now we all produce Now, one of the main Now most people take now smoke. And then finally So year 11.